Jelly! So today we're going to make chili. This recipe is very easy. It uses commonly available things that you have at the store. It's way better than chili in a can. And most of the ingredients are shelf stable. The only things we're using today that aren't are the meat, which you can use canned meat, and we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. The cheese, which again, you can get freeze dried cheese and the sour cream, which is optional. And then as an option, if you want, you can also have rice with it as well. So we're just using minute rice again, because it's shelf stable. It keeps for a long time and pretty much everywhere in America, you can get minute rice. So the first step is we're going to cut the meat. Now today we're using uh, stew meat that we bought from the store. It's going to feel a little tough when you cut it. That's okay because the chili juices and everything are going to soften it up. But what we want to do is we're going to put it on the cutting board and you want to cut at least every piece in half. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow the pores of the meat uh, to soak in the juice. The more surface area, the better, because we're going to brown it in the uh, pan, as you'll see. And then we're essentially going to let it cook all the way with the juices of the chili itself. Now, if you're using canned meat that's already pre-cooked, there'll be a little bit of modification that we'll discuss later on. Uh, but let's get started. Okay, good. So we're just cutting the meat. Don't. Okay, so the first step after we finish cutting the meat is we're gonna heat this pot up on high. And the point of this is we want the meat to sizzle and do a flash uh, brown. We're just gonna brown the outside of the meat. One of the ways to tell when the pot is ready, and I'm just gonna use a bottle of water, but obviously you can use the tap, is just put a little bit there. And if you get that, that means it's hot enough. So we're ready to go. We're gonna dump our meat in. So we'll pop our meat in, and it is going to start sizzling, which is what we want. Now, you can also use hamburger. Uh, you can use uh, any other kind of uh, red meat that you want. As far as uh, exotic stuff like rattlesnake, elk, buffalo, you're on your own, guys. I don't know. So we're going to let that sizzle up, and then we're just going to rotate it with the spatula. I like to use that. You can use a spoon. And all we really want to do is you're just browning the meat on the outside. So once it gets like that brown color, that's really what we're looking for. And we're just gonna do a browning. So we'll be right back with the next step as soon as I get this done. So once we get the meat browned, it should look like this. I'd bring the camera closer, but the steam is fogging up the lens, so. Uh, but you get the idea. Now, if you're using ground beef, uh, the fat content is probably uh, going to be excessive. Typically, you know, people will use 80-20, 85-15. The trick on that, if you're not using stew meat, is just go ahead and throw a cup of water in there and separate the fat. Uh, let it cook in the water and the fat for a little bit. And then just go ahead and drain it so we get all the fat out. It's going to make it taste a lot better. Lean meat like this, we really don't need to do that. Uh, you can see it's bubbling a little bit. Um, and, uh, but most of that is just, uh, there's a little bit of fat in there. This probably could use a drain too. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll come back to the fire. So after we drain out, uh, the fat, then what we're going to do is we're going to put in a medley. This is a pepper and onion blend. You can get it at any grocery store. Now, if you're in a uh, grid down situation, then, um, you know, either use what you got, um, fresh onions, fresh peppers, or uh, if you have uh, freeze-dried uh, vegetables, uh, go ahead and use that. But this is just red peppers, green peppers, and white onions, that's it. And you're just gonna dump it in there, and away we go. So we're gonna mix it up with the meat. And we're just gonna let, because this is frozen, we're gonna let it thaw out a little bit in with the meat it doesn't take too long and again it's not super critical because 
It's chilly. It's going to be cooking for about a half hour when we're done, as you'll see. So we'll just let that uh, blend together for a little bit and, uh, and we'll come right back. So the next step after we get, uh, get the uh, onion and pepper blend in there is we're going to reduce the heat uh, down to about, uh, you know, like a medium high. And then we're going to put in our kidney beans and we're going to put those in with the juice. We'll just get all those shaken out of there. And then we're going to add our uh, tomato sauce. Now, you want to use these small cans of sauce. And I'll put you know links in the description below so you guys know exactly what we did. Um, so you don't have to write it down as we go. But don't use paste. Paste will make it sweet. You want to use the small cans of sauce. And we're going to just dump that in there. And then we're going to mix it around. So we coat everything. We'll do that real quick. So we just get it mixed in with the meat. And your meat should stop bubbling and boiling at this point uh, because the uh, kidney beans obviously cool it down. So the next step is we're going to put in the diced tomatoes. But one of the things that this recipe features is we're going to be only using the juice from this first can of beans. We're not going to be using the juice in the other cans. We're going to strain everything out. So we'll show you that as well. Okay, so the next step, we're going to add the chili powder. And I did not use the whole thing. I used about uh, half of it. Um, so we'll get that in there, give it some spice. Then we're going to put the black beans in. So we'll get those in there. And then the diced tomatoes, we've rinsed out just like we rinsed out the beans. We just ran them under a strainer under cold water. And that way we don't have too much tomato juice in there. We just want... Uh, the tomatoes themselves. That'll add some body and some interest. So everybody's favorite part, we put the Guinness in. Why do I use Guinness? For the flavor. All the alcohol will boil out while we're cooking. So no worries if you're, uh, you know, not an alcohol consumer. But the Guinness works really good. When it stops foaming, you'll see that that's when the alcohol is boiled out. So we're going to pop this in. So we'll get that in there. Now, if you choose not to use the beer, what you can do is just uh, take one of the cans that we just used, fill it with water, and then you can just uh, uh, put water in here to make up the difference. But I'd rather have the beer. Like I said, it gives you a uh, more of a robust flavor. It makes it interesting. And I guarantee that uh, people will say this is the best chili they've ever had uh, when you serve it, because that seems to be the reaction that I get. Maybe people are just blowing smoke up my rear but they seem to eat everything that I make. So I think that might be the case. Now, we're going to use some Creole spice. Again, most supermarkets are going to have this. And I'm just going to dump it and cover the whole top of it and put it aside. You can always add more if you need it, but you can't subtract. So you don't want it to be too hot. So I would wait until it's all done, taste test it, and then uh, decide if you need more. We're going to do about uh, five, uh, five twists of this. That should be good enough. That's just fresh ground pepper. And then we're just using uh, sea salt out of a grinder. You get these anywhere. And we're just going to do a couple of those. We don't need too many. I don't like a lot of sodium in my food. You might be different. And then we're going to stir it all up. And at this point, we're going to let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And we'll roll in a shot of what this looks like once it goes up to simmer. I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit to get it going. But you don't want to do it uh, too hot. You just want it to gently simmer. And the reason why is we don't want our meat to be tough. We want it to have enough time to have the juices soak in and really make that meat uh, soft and palatable. And uh, just make a really good uh, pot of chili. But don't cook it too long and don't cook it too high. You just want a gentle simmer. So you'll see it start to simmer. You can see the frothiness. That's from the actual uh, beer. So that will go away. And again, if you're using water, you're not going to have that like milky frothiness. But as it boils off the alcohol, that will go away. So we just want it to gently simmer. We're going to do that for 15 minutes. And then we'll be right back. So we've been simmering this nicely for 15 minutes. 
and pretty much everything is blending together the way we want. That's going to be really good. Now, the last ingredient we're going to add is the pinto beans. And you can see we have them in a strainer. Like the black beans, we rinsed off all of the bean juice that was in that can. And that's going to keep it from being um, a mishmash of flavors that we don't want. So the kidney bean is the only one that we use the juice of. The black bean and the pinto, we do not. So the reason we add the pinto beans last is pinto beans are a really soft bean. And if you try to cook them all the way through uh, during the recipe, they're going to essentially break down and it's going to be mush. It's not going to be good. So we just want to gently pour those in. And then we're just going to fold them in just, you know, gently. You don't have to stir like a madman. Just go slow. And we'll get them in there and that'll get them heated up. And so now we have our kidney beans, we have our black beans, and we have our pinto beans, our peppers and onions, our meat, our tomato sauce, our tomatoes, our uh, chili spices, and our Creole spice. So that's going to come together. It'll come back to a simmer again. We're going to do another 15 minutes, and then we will be all done. So there you have it, the finished product. We put a little bit of sharp cheddar on the top little bit of sour cream. That's all optional. Uh, just make sure it's seasoned to your taste. If it's not spicy enough, you can always add some more Creole seasoning, a little more pepper to your taste. Just remember, once you put it on, you can't take it off. Hope you enjoyed the chili. We always do. It's one of our favorite dishes. It's a one pot meal with some modification. You can make this anytime, camping, uh, grid down, and it's something that uh, the whole family will enjoy. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.